then we move on to our next presentation. It's my pleasure to introduce Tommaso, Tommaso Flaminio, who will be speaking about coherence in the aggregate, a betting, a betting method for uncertainty measures on a many value defense. It's a long title. Quite a long yeah. title, yes. <laughs> um, so, first of all, let me say that this is actually a joint work with Eichel and Luis Codo from the, you know, the uh, Artificial Intelligence Research Institute in Barcelona. Uh, the idea of this work is to try to push a little the classical definite approach to or foundation of probability theory to more general uncertainty measures and trying to look from this point which, are, which other kind of uncertainty measure we can, we can characterize by this, uh, in this framework. And uh, the criterion that we define is called, where is it? Okay, coherence in the aggregate. And I, I will explain you why. Uh, this is the, 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 the chosen name. So let me just start recalling how, what, what definite this um, foundation of probability uh, is about. So imagine a game, well, this is very small. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let, let, let me read it. <laughs> so we have two players. <laughs> yes, if you want to. <laughs> um, okay, imagine a game of two players, the bookmaker and the gambler. And they're playing the following games. So the, the bookmaker chooses a class, a finite set, actually, of events of interest. And, uh, and for each event, he plays a real number, publishing a book. So for every event, he gives a real number into, into 0, 1. So it is bounded. Okay, after that, the bookmaker has published the book. The gambler can choose stakes, uh, sigma 1, sigma k, one for each event which is involved into the reals. So notice that stakes can be either re, um, positive or negative. And for each event, in, that, in this stage of the game, the gambler pays to the bookmaker the amount of... Uh, so for every event, just multiply sigma i times beta, which is the, the value that the bookmaker gave to the event ei. You take the sum of all of them, and then he pays this amount of euros to the bookmaker. This is, so to say, the price to pay to participate to the game, no? Okay, for the moment, of course, in order for the game not to, not, to be not non-trivial, uh, events are, uh, the, the realization of events is unknown. So the, the, the two players, they don't know if events, of course, are true or not. But once a possible word V is, is reached, for every event, then now is the bookmaker that pays back to the gambler Zero if, uh, if the event EI is false in this possible world, but he pays sigma i euros if the, the event EI is true, okay? So this means that the total balance of this game for the bookmaker is calculated by considering uh, the amount of euros that the gambler pays to the bookmaker minus what he receives back from the bookmaker when, when the possible world is realized. Okay, so of course the balance is relative to this kind of, to this specific possible word which has been realized. So to say, so the balance is this formula here, okay? So the book alpha, sorry, this should be beta. The book beta is, um, is a Dutch book, or is not coherent, is incoherent, if the gambler has a strategy of bets ensuring a sure win. So independently on which is the possible word that, that would be reached, uh, the bookmaker is always going to lose money. In this case, the book is called Dutch or incoherent. In the other case, it is called coherent, of course, or non-Dutch. Okay, if you want to just try to formalize a little the, the situation, we have the following uh, setup. We have a finite set of possible words. Here we are in the classical case, okay? So we have a finite set of possible words, a V1, Vn. Uh, events are just subset of possible words, as usual. And the book, of course, is a map, just a map that assigned to every uh, event EI a real number, a real number between 0 and 1, beta i. Um, then the book is coherent. If and only for every stake that the, 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 the bookmaker, the, the gambler can choose for the events, uh, there is a possible word. So in this case, it's just the Boolean homomorphism of, the, of this Boolean algebra into the two truth values, two classical truth values 0 and 1 such that the balance for the bookmaker is not negative. Okay, until here, probability is not, is not involved in some sense. It's not clearly involved. But the theorem says that 
the coherence, again, of beta is equivalent to the existence of a probability measure uh, on the Boolean algebra of events, such that uh, this probability extends the assignment. So, in other words, uh, a book is coherent if and only if the values that are assigned by the bookmaker are probability values, okay? Or the, the, the values that are assigned are assigned in, 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 in a coherent way with the law of probability theory. Okay, this is for classical events, so in the sense that we, ha we have classical subset of, of, of possible words. Now I want to present a, a, a framework in which we can deal with many valued events. So, if you imagine a Um, if you here you have your set of possible words x, and then you have your, the classical truth, view, truth value zero one. Um, of course, you can imagine a classical event with something like this. Okay, a Boolean function here. The idea of considering many-valued events is because they generalize classical events, and the idea is just that you can take any function, any function from zero one, not to just to zero one, but to the world real interval zero one. So here you have real numbers. Okay? So you take any function like this. This is a many valued event. The class of many values event can be specified in some particular terms, but it's not the case here. I mean I just want to present the, the, the general framework and that's it. The algebraic framework, so instead of Boolean algebras, because we cannot you cannot use Boolean algebras anymore, we move to MV algebras. Those are the equivalent algebraic semantics of the infinite value Lukasiewicz logic. They can be presented in several ways. Probably Enzo will speak about this tomorrow. No? Okay. <laughs> anyway, so there is a huge literature now on, on MV algebras. And, uh, but I don't want to enter it. I just want to give you some example just to, 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 to clarify which is the idea behind this. Okay, first of all, there are the generalized some of Boolean algebra. So every Boolean algebra is an MV algebra. Okay. But more than this, every MV algebra has a larger Boolean subalgebra, which is the set of elements which are uh, independent. Uh, sorry, idempotent. idempotent. Um, notice that we have this signature here. We have a set, a binary operation, a unary operation, and two constants. One of them is redundant, but for, for completeness, let me write it. So the set of points which are idempotent under these operations here forms uh, the largest Boolean algebras of, of, of every MV algebra A. But more, in, more, more uh, in particular, if you take the real unit interval, 0, 1, and we define these two operations, so truncated sum and the standard negation, 1 minus x, what you get is an MV algebra. And moreover, uh, this is quite peculiar. It's not any, MV. I mean, it's, it's, it's the generic algebra for the variety. So it, this algebra plays the same role as the two element Boolean algebra plays for, 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 the, for the variety of Boolean algebra. So, um, so here, of course, elements are in a, in a, in a linear order scale, but in, more in general, you can take any set, x, and take, for instance, all functions from x to 0, 1, and uh, define the same operations like, like before, but point-wisely, and you get, again, an MV algebra. Okay? For the rest of the talk, we, more or less, we always, we always stay at this level. So we always consider... Um, MV algebras of this kind. MV algebras can be really much more complicated than this, but for the sake of, 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 of the work we are, I'm going to present, we will stay just here. Okay? So when I speak about MV algebra, just think about the, an algebra of functions from a set. Usually it will be fine, a finite set anyway. Finite set to the reals uh, with, this kind of, with, the, with this operation defined point wisely. Uh, so if we move from Boolean algebras to MV algebras, how can we generalize uh, definitive approach to probability? This has been done first by Jeff Paris and then by Daniele Mundici. Uh, Paris worked in the case of finite Boolean algebras, then Mundici generalized this approach to, to all MV algebras, actually. The idea is exactly the same as the, of definitive. So you still have a class of events that now are not element of a Boolean algebra, but element of, a, of an MV algebra, A. A book is is what it was before, just a map that assigned to every element of this algebra that you choose a real number into 0, 1. And, uh, and then the book is coherent. Uh, if um, for every choice of stakes, again, sigma 1, sigma k, that the gambler can choose for, 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 the, for the events that are involved, 
there exists, of course, not, not, not a classical possible world, not the, class, not the Boolean uh, homomorphism of A into zero 1, because here we have MV algebra, so we need a many valued possible world, and in this case, it is just an MV homomorphism of the algebra A into the standard algebra, so into the reals, such that the balance is not negative. Okay, so the definition is exactly the same as in the classical case. The unique difference is that the truth value of events now is not either zero or one, but you can have intermediate values here. And you have to take care of them when you calculate the, 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 the balance here, okay? Um, so possible words in this sense are just homomorphism, MV homomorphism. Okay. Yes. No, I, I should. No, I, I don't have too much. Well, but it is, it, no, you're right. It is, uh, it doesn't change too much. Uh, no, no, you're right, you're right. But, uh, it is true. Um, here, well, this is, this is what I didn't stress. So the stakes can be either positive or negative. This means that in every uh, stage of the game, so for every event, uh, the gambler can decide to, to play as the real gambler, and in this case, he's buying the bet, or if, and in this case, he's paying a positive amount of money for this, or he can decide to switch his role with the bookmaker, and in this case, it's, what he does is just to, to pay a negative amount of money. So he decides how much money he wants, how much money the, the bettor has to pay him to buy in the bet. Okay? This is called reversibility of the game. So at every stage, for every event, the, the bookmaker, uh, sorry, the gambler can decide if he wants to play as a gambler or as a bookmaker. Okay? This will be the same all along the, the, my presentation. So it is, it is a crucial point in, in, in the Finitis approach, but it will be the same. Uh, the same also for, for the case of MV algebras and whatever. If you see, also here stakes can be either negative or positive. Okay? So, of course, so we have a, a coherence criterion for MV algebras, but of course probabilities cannot apply here because we have a wider class of algebras and more general. And uh, in fact, the, 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 the role of, of probability is played by uh, what is called state of an MV algebra, which is just a map from the MV algebra into 0, 1, which is normalized like probabilities, and which is additive in this sense. So, this operation here, uh, this plus plays the role of the disjunction on Boolean algebras, and this plays the role of conjunction. So whenever X and Y are disjoint in some sense, in the, in the MV algebraic sense, then the state of the sum is the sum of the states. This is just additivity. And the theorem says that the, the coherence on a, of a book on many valued events uh, is equivalent to the existence of a state that uh, extends the, the, book, the book itself. Okay? which can be, can be also expressed in some geometrical terms, saying that actually this state is, can be seen as a convex combination of some, uh, some MV homomorphisms from, from, from the same algebra into 0, 1. Okay, this is not, this is not what I, I, I will go to speak today. So, definite theorems co uh, connect the coherence of classical events to probabilities, and Mundich's theorem says that the same holds uh, for MV algebras, uh, but with respect to states on MV algebras, not, not, of course, not the probabilities. Okay, this is not what I want to speak about today. I want to make a step forward. Instead of stay here at the level of states, try to, find, to present another class of, of, of uncertainty measure, which are belief functions on MV algebras, of course, and try to present this coherence criterion for this, kind of, for this class of, of, of uncertainty measures. So let me just briefly recall what the belief function is on Boolean algebras, because then I will need this definition to be, to be generalized later. Uh, so if you have a Boolean algebra of, of like the power set of the, the, the class, the, 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 the Boolean algebra 2 to the x, so we take the power set of, of a set x, and for every uh, subset of x, you define this map, which actually is the map that is telling you if, if a given B is a subset of A or not. Okay, so it is the characteristic function of the inclusion operator. Then a map, Bell, is, is a belief function on the algebra 2 to the x. If there exists a probability here on the power set of the power set of x, such that for every subset A, the belief of A is the, is the, is the probability of this function here. Okay? 
So in other words, uh, you can see every probability measures starting from a probability distribution of, on, on possible words. In this case, you just consider a mass assignment on subset of possible words, and then you compute. So from the, from the mass assignment, you compute this probability that, of course, is defined not on the power set of x, but on the power set of the power set. You need to jump dimension, and then you define belief function in this way. There are several equivalent ways for, for, for introducing belief functions on Boolean algebra, but I, I prefer this, this definition because then it is easier to be generalized for, to, to, to the case of, of MV algebras. And uh, um, of course, if you have a belief function, I can define the dual uh, plausibility function in this way, just by duality. Okay? So what happens if we move from Boolean algebras to MV algebras? So here we don't have Boolean function, we have functions from x to the reals into 0, 1. So actually, if you see the definition, you have to generalize two things. The first one is the notion of inclusion, and the other one is the notion of probability. Of course, probability will be generalized by state, by a state, but inclusion will be generalized by this map here. So consider now an MV algebra of this kind. So we have a finite set and functions from x to 0, 1. For every element A, so for every function here, you consider the map rho A that maps every pi in the same, in the same MV algebra to this value here. This value is the minimum of pi x implies AX. This implication is Lukasiewicz implication, which is defined, of course, as is the material implication in, in MV algebraic terms. And it is a notion of inclusion. Okay? In fact, if you apply this row to a classical set, A, and you restrict to the Boolean, to the Boolean subalgebra of this, you get exactly the, 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 the previous map. So it is an, it's a, it's like a many-valued inclusion operator. And then a belief function, a map from, 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 from this MV algebra 0, 1 to dx to 0, 1 is a belief function if there is, is not a probability but a state. Of course, in the, in the case of belief function, it's the probability on the power set of the power set of x. And now you need a state on this algebra here. So you start from the begin, from the starting algebra, and then you take the the, 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 the the fuzzy subset of these functions. So if there exists a state here, such that the belief of A is the state of rho A. So the idea is exactly the same. You state the probability of an inclusion. Okay? And of course, uh, as in the classical case, you can define a plausibility function just considering the dual, the dual notion of a belief function. OK, a belief function is said, uh, uh, usually, uh, since we here we are working with function that, ge in general, you can consider function that don't touch one, OK, that are not, not normalized in some sense. The, the, effect, uh, the effect of this is that the belief function usually are not normalized. A belief function is normalized if the belief of zero is zero. This is not always true, like in the classical, like in the case of Boolean algebras. Um, and of course, the, by duality, the, pl the, the plausibility function is normalized if the plausibility of 1 is 1. Uh, a belief function is said crisp focal. This is the notion that Thomas Krupp introduced some, some years ago. If the inclusion operator act on classical, in general, not, not, on, all, not on all this kind of function, but on, it's just restricted to classical, to classical subset of x. It's slightly more complicated than this, but let me let, just, just, just stay with this intuition. And of course, the plausibility function associated to a belief is crisp focal. Well, a plausibility function is crisp focal if the is dual is crisp focal as a belief function. Okay? And now, we'll, let me introduce the, 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 the criterion that allows to capture, to, to, to catch exactly this, this kind of functions, which is called coherence in the aggregate. Okay, remember in definite this game, we start with two players, and we have a set of uh, possible words, a finite set of possible words, and, um, and a set of events, which are a subset of this MV algebra here. Okay, you have functions. In addition now, we need a finite set of informative agents, then I will explain you what, 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 they, are, what they are needed for. And for technical reason, we assume that the agents that we are dealing with are more than the events which are involved. This should be k. 
no, are more than the possible words, right? So it's okay. So we have more agents than possible words. And then we have this metaphysical entity, which is the oracle. The oracle assign, at a certain stage of the game, will assign to every agent a reliability degree. Okay? So and now how the games works? Well, as usual, the, the, the bookmaker publishes his book. The gambler pays stakes, also here either positive or negative, in the sense that it is a reversible game, and pays uh, to the bookmaker this amount of euros. Uh, okay, until here, we are exactly as infinity. What happens in infinity? In infinity, at a certain point, the possible word lies, and the possible word is telling you, okay, look, this event is true, this is false, this is one half if we have many valued events, this is one third, whatever. At this point, what happens is that every agent of the set that we, that we choose, um, chooses a subset of X in which he believes that the, the actual world belongs to. So we have X, and every agent will say, well, for me, the, 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 the true world is here, is in this set. Another agent will say, well, no, for me, it's here, for me, it's here, and so forth. And at this point, once the, uh, the agents give their opinion on where the, the, the actual world is, the oracle assigns to each agent his, his reliability degree. Okay? So at the end of the game, what bookmaker and gambler have, they have a class of subset of possible words given by the agents, and the reliability degrees for each agent. The problem is that with this information, they cannot compute a value, a real value for every event. So in fact, the problem is, okay, if the, if the, play, if the game ends here, how to compute the total balance? There are no ways, okay, with this ingredient. But if we have subset of X, subset of possible words, and you have a reliability degree, it is exactly the same of asking for a, uh, a possibility distribution. Okay, what is a possibility distribution? It's nothing but a, a map from X to zero one with no restrictions. The unique restriction that we will ask is that we, we are ruling out a function which is constantly zero for, for, for reasons that means that uh, we are assuming that at least one, uh, it is impossible to assume that all agents are all un completely unreliable, okay? And um, so instead of subset and reliability, we have this unique map, which is a possibility distribution here. Okay, but still, uh, every possibility distribution arises in this way, so there are no loss of generality of thinking that actually we end up with this kind of map. But still, it's not possible to compute the total balance, because now we have functions, which are events, we have stakes, whatever, and we have another function, which is the possibility distribution. So what we have to do is to aggregate values. So now, the, at the end of the game, what we have? We have events, we have the stakes that we paid, and we have a possibility distribution. Now, bookmaker and gambler need a map called alpha pi, which depends on the possibility distribution that we choose, in order to aggregate the values provided by pi. And how? Well, this brings to, okay, assume, I, I, I will go back to this, to this aggregation map. But in general, think of an aggregation map that for every possibility distribution and for every event gives you a real number. Once this aggregation is fixed, then we can finally compute the total balance in this way, exactly as in definity. But instead of, instead of a possible word here, in definity here we have V of EI. Here we have the aggregation value for EI, the aggregated value. And so the, 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 the principle of coherence in the aggregate is the following one. So a book on many valued events, but you can even think of classical events, it's not, it's not a big deal here, is coherent in the aggregate and with respect to the, to the chosen aggregation function if, if B is not losing money, not independently on the word that is realized, but independently on the possibility distribution that in some sense the oracle is giving you. So it is coherent in the aggregate if, if uh, for every stake, real, uh, positive or negative, there exists a possibility distribution, not a possible word, a possibility distribution on words such that the total balance for the bookmaker is not negative. 
Okay, now let's try to understand what happens if we specialize this disaggregation function here. So what I was saying before, instead of considering all possible uh, possibility, possibility distribution, let, let's consider the one which are at least positive. So in the sense, let's rule out from this set the one which is always zero. Okay, that from, from, the, from, the, from, the, from the point of view of the game, it means that at least one agent among all of them is at least epsilon reliable. Okay, we are, we are considering that it is impossible to consider all, all of them completely unreliable. So there are mainly three ways for aggregating these, these, these values. And uh, uh, I'm going quite quickly, but the idea is that there is a pessimistic way, an optimistic way, and an average way. The pessimistic actually is encoded by, uh, if we consider given the possibility distribution, we define the necessity measures uh, associated, calculated by, by this possibility distribution here. The optimistic one, is the one which uh, is, 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 is done by, by, by using the possibility measure. And if we calculate the average, we have the average. Okay? So if we specialize the coherence in the aggregate, aggregate criterion, we say that uh, consider a book, we have stakes, and suppose that there exists a possibility distribution such that the balance is positive with respect to with this aggregation map, then we say that the book is pessimistically coherent. It is optimistically coherent if, if the, the balance is not negative, but with an aggregation map, which is a possibility distribution. And it is coherent in the average if the balance is not negative with respect to this aggregation here. Okay? So the theorem says that a book is pessimistically coherent if and only if it can be extended by a belief function. Okay? So Belief functions are captured by a pessimistic aggregation and then the usual notion of coherence. Okay? The book is, is optimistically coherent and, of course, pessimistically and optimistically as in some sense dual. And in fact, the, the map that, ma that captured this, this notion of, of coherence are plausibility, which are the dual of, of belief functions. And if it is coherent in the average, then it is state coherent. So we, in this case, we capture belief function if you consider pessimistically uh, aggregation functions, plausibility if you have optimistic aggregation function, and states. So we turn back to the previous case when we aggregate function in an average way. OK? How much that? Just two minutes? OK. Just very briefly, because this is also a quite in, in interesting part. So before I didn't, I didn't impose any condition on, on the possibility distribution. It means that I didn't impose any condition on the reliability map that the oracle is giving to the, to, the, to the agents which are involved in the game. But assume that for some reasons, for instance, you know that uh, there is at least one agent which is completely reliable. So in this case, you are considering just possibility distribution which are normalized. It means that the function you are considering in some point that touch one, okay? Or maybe you have another information, you in the sense that the two players which are playing the game. They have the information that um, there is some agent which is completely reliable, but the other one are completely unreliable. So in this case, you are considering possibility distribution which are classical sets. So they belong to this set here, CX, so the classical possibility distribution. Or there is exactly, exactly one agent which is completely reliable, you touch one in just one point, and all, in all the other points is zero. Those are the drastic ones. So if you specialize the previous coherence criterion with respect to this kind of, let me skip this, to this kind of, um, of, of, of classes of possibility distribution, you can say that uh, a book is, uh, suppose that S is one of these classes, and as, um, a book is as coherent if, uh, for every choice of stake, there is a possibility in S, not any kind, any possibility distribution, but one which exactly belong to the set you fixed, such that the balance is not negative. And then, what you get is that if you consider 
normalized possibility distributions and you ask for pessimistically coherence, then you get normalized belief functions, not surprising. If you take normalized coherence and optimistically you get normalized plausibility functions, if you have classical possibility distribution and you ask for uh, pessimistically coherence, then you have crisp focal belief functions. You have crisp focal plausibility function, you have optimistically coherence with respect to the same class, so with respect to classical uh, possibility distributions. While if you, um, if you consider drastic ones, so in some sense you have just one point, which is one and the other are zero, then it doesn't matter if you are, you are pessimistically or optimistically, you always get states. Okay? And states can also recover whenever S is any set. If, actually, if S is any model subset of, of these possibility distributions, uh, but you compute the, 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 the total balance considering the average aggregation map, you still have states. Okay? So, just to arrive to the conclusions, we have this kind of uh, criterion that is able to capture uh, belief functions, plausibility functions, and it can be specialized in order to have normalized one Chris focal and states. States were already known, but here we have another, another kind to, to attach states uh, from this point of view. Uh, from this height, we have usually in the classical sense, from belief function, you can see more classes of uncertainty measures. For instance, you can see also those which are called necessity possibility measures, which are exactly the one that I was using here. But the problem is that we are not able to specify this criterion, this aggregation criterion, to capture these, these, two, these two measures. Here. And this is our future work in, the, in, this, in, this, um, in this framework. So, well, some bibliography and thank you. Thanks, Tommaso. We have time for one question. Yeah. Oh, I'll take two then. Yeah. Now, just a curiosity concerning um, the definition of belief function. It seems to me that there is a close correspondence between the, the notion of belief function and plausibility, which are dual to each other, to induce measure, uh, uh, the inner and outer measure induced by a, a measure defined on the sigma algebra subset. Is that, is that true? Uh, yeah. You have a measure. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> ah, okay, no, so the answer... Mm. Yes, yes, but... There is a paper by Joe Halpern uh, showing the, the connection between measures and, uh, uh, and belief functions, so... I was wondering whether the result is the reverse implication true, I mean... Uh, given the belief function as defined that way, can we find, uh, can we find um, a probability measure such that the induced inner and outer measure are exactly the belief function you defined? I think so. so the well, in the classical case, I think so, because... And so the result I can mean, be stated in terms of uh, directly inner and outer measures? Probably, yes. But there, actually, there are several ways for, for introducing belief functions in, in, in... For instance, I didn't mention, but there is a paper from, I don't remember, Jaffre, it will be around the 80s, maybe, maybe before. And he's providing a kind of definitive style approach for the belief function, but it's slightly different from this. But he's, 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 and he's using almost... Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That consequence, the power set of the set of consequences. Yes, exactly, exactly. Because and he, he, say, he, he assumes he, yes. states he where the you don't know exactly the, the consequences. In yes, he's and interpreting he, he, the inclusion between states as the yeah. logical consequence. And then he assumes this, that yes. when you have such an uh, imprecise act, uh, you, you still have a precise uh, value uh, on the outcome. And exactly. he comes up with a probability distribution over, over these subsets, and so this is a really function. It yeah. is somehow lead by, by, by another, another equivalent Inter um, definition of, of, of belief functions on, 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 Boolean, on Boolean algebras. For MV algebras, this definition usually we, we don't know if there is a, it is equivalent to other definitions that can be, can be, can be written, but uh, that follows the, the, the other equivalent um, definition of, for Boolean algebras. For instance, what we were discussing before about total monotonicity. Total monotonicity is, 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 is a property that characterizes belief functions on Boolean algebras. But when you move to MV algebras, we don't know. 
Well, we don't. We 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 are, we are not sure that is not a character. Is not a characteristic. Uh, is not a de right definition. But for instance, is not. Uh, we don't know if it is exactly the same characterization. So we just had a, a, a kind of maybe naive questions about all these type of framework. In some sense, when you are considering a many-valued events, you know, the fuzzy set, but actually you can view it as a kind of gamble. I mean, anyway, this is this is just a gamble on the unit interval. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And so, in some sense, uh, you are computing with with this type of approach directly the expected value. So I was wondering whether there, there could not be a connection between. Uh, let's say, uh, decision theory type of things that try to characterize expectations, and, and these uh, this things right away. I mean, because in, in some sense, you, if you see that definity is a, approach is, is a step where you define the probability, and then Savage is doing the whole thing, uh, defining the expectation. Yes, 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 yes. So in this, this kind of definity theory defines the expectation right away. So you can say it's fuzzy sets and MV algebra, but for instance, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you could in some say sense you have, you have a gamble. Uh, but you have the same, the same algebraic structure, which are MV algebras, for instance, in which you have uh, events, but also utility. Or you, you should interpret the, f the functions as utility, no? And yeah. yes, it's just, it's just a matter of interpreting these functions. But it's true, I mean, states, states are just average values, so they're just expected values of. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. I'll have to stop it here, so let's thank Tomas again.